Hey everyone, this is Alan Fire. Welcome back to a new Action VFX tutorial. Um, I'm excited to be back. We're going to be creating this shot you see here. We'll be compositing the Action VFX Explosion Volume 2 Explosions. <clears throat> I was kind of redundant. Okay, but there there will definitely be some interesting techniques we'll cover today. A lot of good visual effects knowledge to be learned. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can get a little more familiar with Adobe After Effects, the software we'll be using to composite this explosive lusciousness. So the first step, step 01, is tracking. No, not tracking. We've done this too many times before. Go watch our other tutorials. We covered almost every form of tracking. I tracked this footage in Mocha and then applied it to a null object. Check out maybe something like our ground crack tutorial. We cover how to do this pretty well, the tracking. Okay, so here's our tracking. So step two is to create the mat, the mat, the foreground. So, okay, here in this shot, the explosions are going to be behind this building. They're going to come up from behind this building. So the mat contains the information defining where the explosions need to be visible and where they do not need to be visible. They do not need to be visible where this building is. So we've already created a entire tutorial explaining exactly how we made the foreground the mat for this shot. Go check that out but it looks something like this. We've got a foreground. We're going to place the explosions behind this foreground. So let's go ahead and move on. So he here's a look at one of the explosion elements we'll be using. These are from Action VFX. This is the Explosion Volume 2 collection that just recently came out. And these things are really amazing. They're ultra high quality. Check how much it stays in frame. F just, just feast your eyeballs on that rich, turbulent texture. And the coolest part is that these are actually real explosions that contain both the fire and the smoke. Usually you can only get CG explosions with both of these qualities, and CG explosions have a tendency to look like garbage. So let's go ahead and grab three of these explosion elements, drag it down to our composition. You can see how excellent the resolution is. Oh, look at that, look at that. Um, what I'm going to do is hit A for anchor point, just kind of position the anchor point correctly first. So we're moving on to step two, which is to position these stock footage elements to, you know, to put them in the right spot, the right size, the right space. But, but a few things I like to think about that kind of guide me through the process and help me make decisions quicker is firstly think about rhythm. Um, think about the rhythm of these explosions. So you want to go like boom, 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 you know. Just think of a good rhythm and follow that rhythm. You can think about size variation. Just try to cover empty spaces. So I'm going to scale these down. And you can see here he presses this button. That's when the explosions need to go off a little bit after. Maybe the first explosion will go off right about here. Now let's think about which one should we use for the first explosion. I think this one looks pretty nice. Let's have kind of a big one for the first explosion. So we'll place it about right here. Maybe we'll scale it up just a little bit. Something like this. And let's remember to attach these or parent these explosion stock footage elements to the tracking data. So now we're ready for the second explosion. This one looks good. We can move it to the side a little more. So maybe we'll make it go boom, 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 like that. That'll be a good spatial pattern. So we'll make a little time gap between these two explosions. Um, and we'll put it in the right spot. The size looks pretty good. Um, and then now we have the third explosion. So we have this gap between the first element and the second element, but we'll make a little bit of a larger gap between the th second element and third element. So the rhythm's more like boom, boom, boom. Okay, so here's the third element. Let's put the first element over the second element because the second element's further away, smaller. And then you can see we have kind of a gap over here, and that's that other principle I was talking about where there's kind of an empty space. You want to fill it up with stock footage. One section to clustered. Um, I mean, there's always exceptions to the rules, but um, for something like this, it's probably a good idea to just kind of fill in the gap. So we'll make one go here, boom, and then boom. For things like this, there's less mathematical, straightforward rules, and it's more of just more of just preference, taste, creativity. So just watch it through and uh, preview it, and just make adjustments. Okay, so let's say we have all the explosions in the right position, the right time. What we're going to do now is pre-compose them all together into one layer. Um, but also, we, we need to remember to make a duplicate of this track so we don't, so we still have a, a, 
a tracking null in the original composition. So let's grab all these, pre-compose, move all attributes, oceans. I think that looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna go over is color matching. So you can look here in the original footage and see that the shadows are a little bit brighter than they are in the stock footage. So that's the first thing we need to do is bring up those shadows. So let's add a tint effect to the explosions layer and set the black map to white. And set the map black to white. Then we can just change the amount of tint to match those shadows just right. And when we do this, it's always a good idea just to have a color grade to get a good idea about how it's going to look. That's always a good rule of thumb. So let's just copy a color grade here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just to get a better idea. So we kind of make the adjustments here, but also without the color grade, just to make sure we have a good balance. So the next thing we want to think about is the quality of these explosions. It's probably going to be pretty much in every case that these explosions are going to be much better quality and resolution than the footage you're working with. Not unless they're like really scaled up or something. So there's actually a pretty easy way to fix this. What I, what I like to do is just add a camera lens blur or even any other type of blur just to take down the resolution just a little bit to make it match the footage. So since we're not going to add very much at all, it doesn't really matter what blur we add. Fast blur, camera lens blur, doesn't matter. So we're probably going to do about 0.4 pixels of blur and that'll make it feel more at home with the shot. All right. So normally, at this point in the tutorial, I would be so excited to add the glow. Like, uh, you guys just don't know how much I enjoy adding glow to fire. It's, I don't know what it is. But I have to tell y'all, that's originally what I did. But you see, I sent this clip to Action VFX, and they were like, Hey, uh, there's too much glow here. It's like daytime. There's, not, it's, there's a lot of lights around. There probably wouldn't be much glow. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's true. So I, they tell me to bring down the glow a little bit. So that's what I did. I bring it down a little bit and so I sent it back and they're like hey just listen man there's still too much glow here so you know I ended up just kind of getting rid of the glow completely it was it's a sad story um, but it, it makes sense if you think about it like the original conditions that these explosions were filmed in are pretty similar to the conditions we have in this shot so uh, but I do think that's kind of a constant tension in the life of a visual effects artist is balancing uh, realism versus beauty because looking good does not always imply realism uh, so no glow we don't get to have any fun this is a boring tutorial might as well consider this just a waste of time but anyway we gotta make the shot look realistic so instead I guess we'll have to add something else why don't we add some light wrap so I think some light wrap would really help these explosions blend in with the sky better a really cool way to add light wrap is the key light effect. Check this out, key light. And this is this is a really awesome way to add light wrap. So add this to the explosions. And uh, let's go to edge color correction. Make sure you're on final result for the view. So let's check enable color correction. Turn out the brightness. You can see what it's doing here. You can solo the layer even. Turn out the brightness. And then, and, and then make sure and just really crank up the softness. So it's natural, it blends in. It's not too harsh. So we can check out a before and after. So before, after. And doesn't that really help it blend in? All right. And we even have the options here of changing the, uh, go to the color balance wheel and turn this, make a little more blue or something like that. That helps a little bit. Okay. And also one other cool thing I did in the original example, if we go here, so have a look here. You can see this last explosion kind of interacts with all the other explosions. Check that out. Boom. You can see they kind of press away from the explosion as like an air pressure fluctuation thing. So I think that looks pretty cool and it really gives the feel that the explosions are in the same environment, they're interacting with one another. So I can show you how I did that. I did that with a bulge effect. We can look at the animation here. I just animated the bulge height. Um, so I make it kind of bulge inward at first, inward, and then it bulges outward like this, bulges outward. So it's kind of as though this explosion is interacting with all the other explosions around it. So again, it, it bulges inward first, and then it bulges outward. Boom. Just be careful, because you don't want your explosions to look squashed. Kind of like it does here. So I had it a lot higher, it looked really cool. But then made the explosion look kind of squashed, so I had to turn it down a lot. So, Alright, so the last major part of this tutorial is adding the smoke down below. And we did this with the Action VFX free smoke plumes. You can get them free from actionvfx.com. But I got one of the smoke plumes that started from ground zero 
and it, made, and it worked its way up. And this worked perfect for the explosions. And we're just going to composite this below the explosion so this leaves more of a trail and it blends all the explosions in together much better. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag in the smoke plume. We'll put it below the explosions layer. And for now, I'll just do a multiply blending mode. And uh, the first thing I'll do is speed this up a little bit. So maybe, why don't we do like 75. Um, let's remember to attach this to the tracking data. Um, and we'll, we'll just go ahead and do the first explosion. Move this anchor point like that. Like that. Let's just position it right. Maybe scale it up a little more. So instead of having the timing like this where the explosion happens right when the smoke plume begins, what I'll actually do is just move the smoke plume forward like this so that thick part of the explode plume right here aligns with the bottom of the explosion. Um, but then we need to get rid of this top part of the explosion here. So we'll do this with a linear wipe effect. Wipe it like that and put it above the explosion for now so we can see what's going on. Like that, add a good bit of feather. Just keyframe the transition completion. Okay, then we'll stick it back below the explosion layer. And that works pretty good for this first explosion. Now in case any of you are freaking out, we're not going to leave the color of the explosion like this. We're going to have it blend in with the other ones. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this and do practically the same thing for all these other explosions. Just move it forward. Change, add variation to the scale. Okay, so once you have all the smoke elements positioned and timed properly, we can go ahead and pre-compose them together so we can do all the color matching and final adjustments. So we gotta pre-compose these, remember, with the track. Right click, pre-compose, call it smoke. And I'm gonna go in here inside this composition. And instead of using the multiply blending mode, I'm gonna do actually darken. So there's a difference. Um, the, the darken blending mode will actually do one smoke element or the other smoke element in one spot, uh, depending on which one is darker. So it just does the darker of the two instead of kind of combining the darkness of both to make something even darker. So you can see the difference here. So darken does one or the other kind of thing. The only, only bad part is it does kind of create this ugly dividing line, but it shouldn't be noticeable, especially since what we're going to do is, is put a, du a big dust element here at the bottom just to kind of blend the, them all together. So I'm going to drag in this dust wave. We got this from, you guessed it, Action VFX. This is... Um, the Dust Wave Volume 2, got some awesome Dust Wave. This is much better than the Dust Wave Volume 1. The, these here are really good. So what I'm going to do here is invert this Dust Wave. I'll do a, uh, I'll do a Multiply Blending Mode for this. So I'll just kind of position it here at the bottom, T time it just right. And then to get rid of this white here, what we'll do is it, we won't use a Multiply or Darken Blending Mode. We'll use a Shift Channels effect. This is a really nice technique. We'll apply this to the Smoke Composition. And we'll choose Take Alpha from Luminous. And uh, before this, we actually do need to add a Solid Composite effect. Uh, we'll do a Solid Composite white, just so that there's no um, empty spaces like this. So fill that in. Then do Take Alpha from Luminous. So it actually left the luminous areas and took out the dark areas, but to, to reverse this, we'll just add an invert effect and we'll put it before the shift channels effect. Then, for the very last step, we'll add a fill effect after the shift channels, and then we can choose whatever color we want. So this is the advantage of um, doing this method rather than using a blending mode because we get to choose the color that the, uh, the smoke elements are. But we do probably want to take down the intensity of these smoke elements. That's kind of a lot of smoke. So let's go over, let's go in here. Let's add an adjustment layer above everything and uh, go to curves. Just bring up the brightness like this and that'll reduce the thickness of the smoke. Let's see how it looks with the grade. It looks nice, I think. So one other thing I'd like to show you guys are these shock waves. To do this, we use a displacement map. You can see here it does a little bit of displacement and also the map itself is a little bit visible so, so we get to visibly see some of that wave. So how was the map created? Well let's go in here and uh, originally it was just like this. It was just a straight line animated with uh, masks with different levels of feather. Nothing too complex, just this rectangle tool create mask at different le levels of feather. And then above that we have an adjustment layer that has the polar coordinates effect on it from rectangle to polar. And that creates this shockwave ring. And then the next step is just to duplicate these elements, put them in the right point in time, and also position and scale them properly. 
and just to give it some texture, I created some fractal noise and uh, put this fractal noise on stencil luma. So that, that way it creates transparency where there are um, bright pixels. Stencil luma and uh, you can see before and after it just subtracts where there's bright areas on the fractal noise. And that gives it some natural texture. <clears throat> and uh, of course we have this behind our mat so they're not in front of the building and then we have it here in the uh, final composition with this uh, displacement and uh, we use a displacement map for that so we don't want to make this too visible bring the opacity down quite a lot sometimes people don't notice those subtle details but as a whole it, it makes the shot look more realistic they don't know why it looks more realistic they don't notice those details but just subconsciously the whole shot looks more realistic so that's how we created those shock waves so we've come to the end of this episode, we're done with all the learning, and while that was so fun, growing in our knowledge and abilities, it's time to review and celebrate what we've put our efforts into. So we started out setting up the scene with the tracking and the foreground map. Um, hopefully we developed a more educated understanding of where to place your elements in space and in time. We pre-composed our elements together and color matched them to our footage. Uh, and seeing it through a lens of a rough draft grade is always helpful. Uh, we did some quality matching. We did not, however, do any glow. Darn it. Um, but we did do some cool light wrap with key light uh, and made that cool presser fluctuation with the bulge effect. And then we did a whole bunch of stuff to composite that smoke properly. More than I feel like talking about right now, but definitely educational. And then we did a little walkthrough explaining how the shockwave rings were made. Okay, so I hope I was able to make this tutorial a valuable use of your time. Hopefully your skill set inventory is now larger and healthier. My name is Alan Fire, and until next time, I'll leave you to it.